Hey, I'm Stanley Wilder, University Librarian at UNC Charlotte's Atkins Library. And I'm Dr. Susan Arthur, Assistant Professor of Kinesiology at UNC Charlotte and Chair of the Faculty Advisory Library Committee. Susan and I are here today to talk to you about open access and how it affects the research that you publish. The term open access has come to have all sorts of meanings. We like the definition by the philosopher Peter Suber, who says that open access publishing is digital, online, free of charge, and free of most copyright and licensing restrictions. Let's start with a story. Let's say we've got a faculty member who conducts years of research, discovers something new, and then works hard writing it all up into a manuscript. Off it goes to a journal where the article is reviewed and then, yes, they love it. They want to publish it. Here's the contract. The publisher says, mm, can we get this back by the end of the week? The faculty member takes a quick glance at the long, dense contract. She counts the months till her tenure review and then returns the signed contract by return mail. Now fast forward a year later and our faculty member decides to take her article to her local copy store to make copies for her class, where she learns that she can't. Sure, she's the author, but in that contract she gave her article to her publisher and now she has to pay to use it in her own class. That scenario sounds like a bad dream, like it can't possibly happen, but it does happen. It happens all the time and giving away your rights doesn't just affect photocopying. You also give up the freedom to quote yourself at length in a later work, the right to distribute your work as you see fit, reformatting, public performance, and public display. Oh, you can do those things, but now you've got to pay. Faculty signing away their rights is just one piece of a much bigger problem, a problem that open access can help start to fix. No surprise, at the core of the problem is money. Between 1986 and 2005, research journal prices rose 167 percent. That's more than double the consumer price index. At UNC Charlotte, our journals inflated about 6 percent a year, which means that our $3.25 million journal list doubles every 12 years. There's no way. We can't afford this. Nobody can afford this. So how do we fix a system where faculty give away their own work and then pay big money for the research they use? And then on the flip side, what about the researchers around the world who can't cite your work because they can't afford the journals you're publishing in? We're here to help raise faculty awareness of this problem at UNC Charlotte and then encourage the university to support open access publication of research by signing the Berlin Declaration on Open Access. You're saying, wait a minute now, I don't want to sign anything. Well, let us tell you a little about the Berlin Declaration. Back in 2003, the Max Planck Society hosted an international conference on open access. That conference resulted in a simple one-page document. We invite you to read it yourself. It's easy to link to through the library's homepage. Hundreds of research universities have signed on, and we'd like Charlotte to be the first UNC System University on the list. Here's what the document does. It encourages faculty to publish in open access journals or repositories. It encourages them to participate in efforts to maintain quality controls like rigorous peer review. High quality standards are a non-negotiable part of the kind of open access we intend to support. It asks faculty to support the technological infrastructure of open access, software tools, and the descriptive data that makes articles findable. It asks institutions to search for ways of making open access sustainable in financial terms. It's just as important to say what the Berlin Declaration does not do. It does not require any faculty member to do anything that they don't want to do. Everybody must have the freedom to choose where they publish their work, whether it's open access or not. It does not commit institutions to making any changes in their promotion and tenure processes. It does not even say that open access is good for all disciplines. High energy physics recently decided that the entire discipline would move to open access, but other disciplines could conceivably take an equally strong stand against it. In short, the Berlin Declaration does not require UNC Charlotte to do anything at all. It's just an expression of institutional support for the idea of open access. It is in fact so much about encouraging and so little about prescribing. You can ask, why do we bother? Well, we're serious when we say that our current path is just not sustainable. Open access is literally the only viable alternative that we know of. 
We're here because we hope to raise awareness to these issues. We want to go on the record, support the Berlin Declaration, and encourage faculty to publish in open access journals and repositories whenever that is a good option. All of this moves us forward. Now, Atkins Library can help. We can provide technologies and tech support. We've got a lawyer with an expertise in author's rights. We can serve as a resource for open access issues. We'll create web pages with open access readings and news relevant to our campus. Right now, we're working to establish a library fund that would pay authors' charges to reputable open access publications. So we hope you give these issues some thought, and we invite you to talk about them with your colleagues. We especially want to hear about any thoughts or concerns you may have. And we thank you for your time. Thank you.